welcome back to another episode of the Leadership Void. It's Enrique and Vince here. We're so happy to greet you and we're so excited about uh, getting back to the questions that we put in front of the people and so excited about what they answered and, and we're going to be discussing that. Uh, so Vince, what, what do you have for us? Well, first and foremost, happy June, everybody. It's another month, the crazy going through the half of the year. It's, it's just phenomenal that we are in tune and here for you. And today we're actually going to unpack question number five of the leadership survey. And the question is, what's the biggest challenge facing leaders today? And with that, uh, I just want to just throw out there, there's challenges that we face as leaders day in and as managers, as parents, as teachers, day in and day out. But we compiled the top five, and I would summarize a win-win for all, th all five of your responses of two things to improve. Overall, improve communication, which we'll talk about, not just you know, vertical, it could be horizontal, diagonal in the organization, and seek ways to include and improve the inclusion in every process and decision. So with that, we'll start off with the very first tip, uh, the question actually solution was the change, pace, and management. We all know that in today's arena, the chaos and what we don't have in, in our uh, backyard is solutions. So we have to look at this as, okay, what can I do to work in this pace of change? Because it's fast. It's fast. And we seek instant gratification as we want for our needs. And same thing goes for our organizations. You know, we want things fast. Well, how to survive in a crisis? We really have to have, and those who have survived in the crisis, let's back up a second. They have great processes and procedures in place. They have thought about all the what ifs. You know, what if this happens? What if this doesn't happen? What if the CEO leaves tomorrow? You know, directors leave or something, a merger acquisition. So they have great processes and, and of course, procedures. So it starts off first and foremost with all the executives. They have to be on the same page. Dialogue is hugely important in this chaos or this change pace. Uh, being flexible, the ability to adapt, and having the self-management to control your own egos and emotions within this. Also considering the needs and perspective of all stakeholders in the change process is so important. And two other ones is pay attention to the individuals of the change process, your managers, you know, they are the ones who are doing the executing the actually the change. So do a pulse check and how they're handling resistance. Check on them, check on the team. A great thing is always celebrate your wins early. And as I said early, last one, sustain the dialogue because communication is the key. Yeah, no, it's um, uh, amazing how uh, these issues come up when you ask the people, right? So change management uh, is hard. People don't like change. I mean, those that have learned to appreciate change because they understand that it could lead to better things are less, you know, aggressive or uh, opposed to change. But in general, change is hard. You know, you're, you're, uh, there's a comfortability that comes with staying in the same lane at the right speed. You know, there's just peace there. And so when you start to bring change, it's hard to uh, adopt that and to adapt that and put it into place. Uh, but you were, you were perfect in saying, you know, it starts with the leader having a plan, being able to communicate that plan, being able to listen to the folks that are actually executing that plan and get it all together because change affects us all. One little pebble that goes in our lake and you could be on the other side, eventually it'll hit you, right? We're 
in the middle of a scenario right now that a, a pebble, more like a boulder, <laughs> got thrown into the lake. And it seems like we're all being affected. So how do you adopt uh, or adapt during these times of change to bring the positive out? Uh, and it's not just with the current situation. In companies, on a day-to-day, -day, there are little pebbles that are being thrown in your lake. Uh, how do you adapt to those and overcome and you know, use your resources, which is something that I'm sure you're gonna talk about here soon. What's at our resource to be able to facilitate those change uh, management and change of paces? Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> so speaking of a resource, we have, and we're blessed, and also cursed with technology, which is the second uh, <laughs> challenge we're faced. But the, the, let's face it, the future is becoming more digital each and every day. Quickly, technology is advancing and shifting us in all areas, processes, roles, functions of the organizations in ways we can't even begin to understand. So we have to think about this as, okay, these changes are driven by technology but it's the intersection of technology and the human experience. So we as C-suite and leaders have to be able to be able to shift with that technology, with this advancement, because this is something we cannot change ourselves. This is again, change is optional, but growth is, is within. So how are we adapting to it is within us macroly, in the bigger context, we're doing a lot more virtually. This pandemic has forced us to go from like a 30 to 40% virtual employment in the world to probably 90 to, to like 95%. So now we engage in AA, a podcast. We're having meetings virtually, training. But as an individual, the, the micro level, we have to apply same principles of that human experience. You know, dress the part, and, and I didn't shave today, but dress the part, you know, when you are on a podcast or virtual uh, call. You know, think of your surroundings, your background. As a background, we have a beautiful background, if you notice that. But, you know, be on top of your own self and those distractions. Get them away because... We are now keeping this human experience that we need to focus, not you on your cell phone, looking up. We want also to see you as well. So this is also highly important in the macro level and in the macro level of technology. We have to embrace it, folks. Yeah, that's uh, interesting. You mentioned things that it sounded like things that we can actually uh control and then there's things that we can't control right so uh the, part of the things that we can't control is you know change things come at you uh and you have to ad uh, adapt and technology what was good yesterday i'm telling you probably isn't good today <laughs> you might want to stick in in that whole rhythm because you don't want to change right i still want to use my clip art <laughs> well, there's a whole lot of more advanced program than clip art. Uh, and, and if you're using the Windows 3.0 clip art from PowerPoint back then, uh, you're a little behind the curve. But, you know, we, like I said, change is hard, right? So when, when, you, when you face certain things, there's things that you can't change. But I'm sure there's some things that we can control uh, that... Uh, will help uh, make us not only better leaders, but help our teams flourish and develop. Uh, what can you tell us about some things that, you know, we maybe control? Yeah, well, to that point, you know, that technology is a tool. So we got to embrace that tool, but who operates the tools is what we have opportunities to control. Uh, and it starts with within first, but, 
the three things that we pointed out in, in the survey that you all pointed out was managing differences, trust, and, and, uh, and listening, not listening. So let's start off with managing differences because and, and differences come in all shapes, flavors, and sizes. It's not just, it could be cultural differences. It could be generational differences. So we have to understand that our teams are, are great in the fact that this is an opportunity, opportunity, shouldn't be viewed as a challenge. And if you look at it as a challenge, you have to reframe that as how do I capitalize on the diversity of thought that I have in the organization? So that reframing, I think, is crucial for leaders first because innovation and creativity comes from those different thoughts of, uh, and ideas we have, especially if you want different results. Because if you expect different results doing the same thing over and over and over, that's insanity, people. We wanna definitely have different thoughts and invite them into the, to the table. But first, you should do is model the right behavior. You have to model the behavior, treat everybody not equally, but equitably. So that's for number one. Um, understand to be open to those different perspectives and open the levels of communication in both directions. Be self-aware and ask, what affects my leadership? What encourages a culture of inclusion for everyone? Is everyone at the seat of the table? You know, so having that awareness of the different cultures, gender, uh, religion, sexual orientation, generational differences is, is key. And you probably have to work on yourself at times. It's always good to be work on yourself, to be more empathetic, to allow others. Be the ambassador. Ask other leaders to be ambassadors of, of groups, like share employee resource groups. I mean, there's good ways to get involved because action speaks louder than words. Yeah, diversity and inclusion, it's, and I know that's uh, right in your wheelhouse, right? You, 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 you come from that environment, and I'm one that uh, favored to uh, implement things that led to a positive environment, which was also birthed out of, you know, a mindset. You mentioned mindset early on, a mindset of, of diversity and inclusion you cannot be self-centered. <laughs> There's no way you can be self-centered and be inclusive. You can't do it. So it takes a mindset, a shift in, in, in your thought patterns to create something that's way bigger than you. Uh, when you grab a team, you put them together, there are so many valuable attributes housed in a team. And it is up to you as a leader to bring those things out and work with the things that are not so shiny, right? Uh, and, but in order to do that, you must be of the mindset of diversity and inclusion and how do you bring those things to bear. I love that first managing differences because it really is, that's the task of a group dynamic. How do you manage differences? And I'm sure that when you get your hands in, in there and you get them dirty and you get everything working right, it develops an environment. And, you know, uh, it develops an environment where the people trust you. They trust you. And so I would love to hear your thoughts on, on, on trust in, in a team dynamic. Yeah, well, trust is the is the fundamental cornerstone of successful relationships. So we, we all want that trust and need that trust and feel for that trust and needs to create that trust. Because what it does, it really creates stability, transparency, and respect. So it's a huge component of, of building a relationship. So us to do so as leaders, we have to be cognizant first of our body language because the, the the message is conveyed a lot more by our nonverbal clues, cues than, than our words. So body language plays huge within this arena. And the, the next one is our listening as well. But, but they both play into it because 
sometimes if you're not looking at your your team member and you're working on your cell phone on a deadline, you're not talking, you're talking, hearing, but you're not looking. People are going to think you don't trust. He doesn't trust me. He's not really listening because he's not looking at me. Eye contact is so huge. Again, just, just one quick example. And sometimes it's cultural. If you have an employee that you're talking to and they're not looking at you in the eye, it could be just a sign of respect. So you have to understand that difference that you have to manage and, and ask because we perceive it as being rude, but it could just be cultural as well. But again, body language, bottom line, plays huge into this trust environment. Um, you have to commit to your word and your deed. Um, actions, align them with your words. If you're gonna, if you say so, you're gonna do something, well, you know what, do it. Be honest is another one, you know, even when the outcomes are not within your favor. It's not about being popular, it's about being real and genuine, which that drives into being transparent. Just be blunt, be transparent, because that's better than trying to sugarcoat things. Be on time. Be on time of communication. Be on time to meetings, because you're one minute late, then you allow everybody to be late. So again, actions speak louder. Um, we hate gossip. Don't be, don't fall into that line of gossiping because that just circumvents honesty, trust, and integrity within. And apologize. That will add huge dividends into your trust bank account. Apologize if you did something wrong. Apologize if there's some need to apologize because that is huge. You're vulnerable, you're a human being. Huge component. And remember, you set that tone. Yeah, those tips, uh, those points are so critical, so valid. And I know I have uh, stepped through those things in, throughout my leadership life. Uh, and you are totally on point when you talk about uh, the vulnerability piece. Uh, it really takes a leader to step away from themselves. If, if you're a leader and you are all about you, uh, then what I say, you're a positional leader, uh, and that's okay if you're a positional leader. It's not okay for the team, though. It does not fare well for your team because what you do is you lock them out. Uh, but when you can step away from yourself and start uh, uh, exploring what true leadership is, uh, which is it's all about them. It's all about the people that are on, under your charge it's all about the people that are trusting you, right? Because that trust comes almost immediately. A positional authority is set in place. A team member comes into the team. There's already a positional trust. It's up to you to lose it, <laughs> right? But you don't want to. And so uh, trust is something that's so critical. Um, you mentioned uh, in communication, the eye contact, the you know, put your stuff down uh, this morning. Hey, I'm going to tell them myself this morning. Uh, my, you know, my wife was, were discussing something and, and then I was waiting on an email and uh, the email came in. What did I do? I grabbed the phone and as she's talking, I'm verifying that that's that email. Well, what did it cost me? You know, five more seconds, 10 more seconds. What did it cost me to just let her finish? And, and then I'll go check. The email wasn't going anywhere. I was waiting on it as it was, right? So, so it's, it, it's important. And, and I'm, hey, everybody knows I, I'm, I'm for leadership in your house. Do your leadership at your house first, and then you can put, pump it out into the world. Um, so, you know, shame on me for that. Uh, I'm going to have to apologize for that one. But, <laughs> but you know, it really, it really keys into the listening piece. And you know, we've been talking about listening since day one. Uh, it's something that's prevalent in our uh, survey. It's certain, something that is prevalent in the answers uh, that have come in, uh, and it cannot be denied. Listening will get its day in court on this show because it is one of those things that have come up. 
so many times. Absolutely. <laughs> Listening. And, and you brought up a great point by your example, Sharon, with that email with as, when your wife was speaking. I think the awareness piece here is really to take a deep breath and to pause, to be present. Uh, no matter the other distractions that are out there, because the most important thing is that person or, or, or that, per, that person that's in front of you right there or the team that you have surrounding you, be present to them. And that's, that right there will create the trust, will help you manage those differences well. And, and guess what? Leader are there to influence. So listening is plays huge within this. So again, as I mentioned, as uh, as Enrique alluded to, the nonverbal key of eye contact, your posture, you know, your distraction, that email coming in, the bing, you know, we're going <laughs> to default to that. Barriers could be your desk, could be uh, speaking between a car, you know, on a podium and them sitting down. So form a circle, you know, there's a lot of ways to create more energy and, and trust within a boundary that you eliminate and you don't even probably think of. So just, again, the non-physical, your body language plays huge in this listening. And I'm glad you all brought it up because it is something we all have to be aware and reminded of. Um, be attentive, but relax. And be present. It's so important. If you have to take deep breaths, do a meditation, mindfulness exercise before you have a communication, great. Because what, guess what it's going to do is open your mind to that individual, not worrying about the 10 million other things you have to do. And listen to the words and try to picture what the speaker is saying, empathetic, being in their shoes. Goal here is not to interrupt or to impose your solutions. If you think you have a solution and you're so much into providing solutions, pose it as a question. You know, have you thought of this angle um, for that X, Y, Z you're doing? Because you're not giving them an answer, you're just posing a question to them. So just another tactic if you're one that loves to draw solutions within. Just think about different ways to be more of a listener though, not to provide the solutions. I hope those help out. All right, so we've shared some great tips today. Thank you, Vince, for those. Uh, and covering things that we can't control, which were you know, managing uh, the pace, uh, change of pace, change management, uh, technology. And we also covered the, the three things that we say, hey, that came out in the survey that we can uh, do something about, which is managing differences within your team, trust, and listening, or in this case, not listening, right? But you need to listen. And talk about listening, right? We do this every week, and we're so happy to bring you what, uh, what uh, our uh, collective experiences have uh, taught us, along with the uh, guests and answers to uh, the survey questions, uh, but we want you to listen in every Wednesday morning. All right, we're going to be here faithfully, and we're going to bring you some some good stuff. Um, and you know, if you have questions concerning leadership, things you want answered, maybe you want us to highlight something in a future podcast, send those to the Leadership Void at Gmail dot com. We're anxiously waiting for input. Hey, if you just want to tell us we're doing great, that, that'd be great as well. Uh, but, uh, you know, shoot us a line. that We're expecting it. Yeah, and even if you have something you would like us to change, because what, change is inevitable, but growth is optional. So we are willing to also listen to your inputs to improve, so give you a better product as well. So don't forget the leadership void at gmail.com. And just a teaser for next week, we have June 8th coming to the stage, I'm sorry, June uh, 10th coming to the stage, uh, a director of the Operational Impact and Business Development, Development at Endeavors. This is a Texas or nonprofit organization, and we're so fortunate to have 
one of my former Air Force colleagues, a retired Chief Mass Sergeant Benjamin Miranda, joining us. So we're very excited to have him coming on board to talk about what they're doing in the community, not only in, in Texas, but also in the whole United States. I'm so excited for this, uh, the guest speaker uh, uh, list, right? We're, we're been focused on Florida and now we're headed out the state, right? We're going to Texas now. And so excited about how this podcast have grown, uh, the reach. Uh, there are more guests to come, so stay tuned. Uh, we're going national here. And so we're so fortunate, uh, both for the listeners and for the guests that are coming on, um, one thing I want to encourage, if there's anybody out there that would like to be a guest uh, and you feel that you have uh, things to speak about leadership and we would like to discuss that with you, also email us at theleadershipvoid at gmail.com. And if you uh, want us to, hey, sport some stuff, right? The, I'm all Navy. You know, we, we, we usually have a T-shirt. Their mission continues. Right, hey, if you if you want us to wear your your gear, if you want us to drink out of your mug while we're doing the show, uh, also email us at theleadershipvoid at gmail.com and we'll get connected and uh, and get all that squared away. Absolutely. And we just want to say thank you for tuning in. Happy June, and we'll see you all next week.